Hey folks, what's going on? This is Shadow Stars bringing you another video. Um, today, I'm actually going to be calling out this same guy again, Stocks and Crypto Plays, once more. This guy continues to push out video after video, spreading all sorts of misinformation. He understands so little about the market. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's just throwing, he's just throwing whatever, whatever he, stuff that he somehow comes across reads and then just throws against the wall and be like oh you know what okay let me just pick this 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 and then he just spreads it all out onto his social media no logic no reasoning no comprehension whatsoever this guy is an absolute grifter absolute fraud um i mean more people really need to be calling him out so without further ado let's go into it but remember that I've been covering this guy for the past couple of videos. I've uh, been following him for the past, I don't know, week or so. Um, so I want to touch on one little, uh, do a one quick update on one of his previous videos. And let, let, let's see what is, how his prediction is going on. So on this uh, video, December 19th, um, he said that, hey, Puss in Boots, Last Wish, just came out in theaters. Uh, he's predicting that it's going to do one billion. So let let let's hear it from his video. Hundred million dollars worldwide, and that was like twenty years ago. Oops. Sin Boots one when it first came out, it, it grossed five hundred million dollars worldwide, and that was like twenty years ago. So think about inflation and how much tickets cost now and all that, and there's more people now and everything. So I'm predicting that Puss in Boots two is going to gross a billion dollars worldwide, and this is. Gonna okay, so he comes out with you. He tells you, hey, you know what? Twenty years ago, wrong wrong date. It was actually 11 years ago, this movie, um, the first Puss in Boots came out. Don't believe me? Here you go. Box Office Mojo. Puss in Boots, 2011. I covered this in my previous video, October 27th, 2011. Yes, it did $554 million worldwide. And now he's saying this new one, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, is going to do a billion. How is it tracking? First day, 3.2 million. Domestic Thursday, 2.9 billion. Or, I'm sorry, million. 3.2 million, 2.9 million. Worldwide, 24.7 million. How many days does this need to go on for for it to hit the 1 billion mark? Is it going to stay in theaters for that long? How long was the original out for? It was out for 431 days, 61 weeks. Okay. Look at it. At the end, I mean, this thing was barely averaging sub $100,000 a day. Only on weekends, it would get up to maybe 60, 100K. But if it's not, way under. And he's going to say that, hey, you know what? Let's just double up that figure. Randomly. Where is his analysis? Where is his forecasting based on what? Just on, oh, inflation? Oh, 20 years ago? He can't even get the times, times right. This is the type of guy you're watching? This is the guy you're relying on for information? Do you trust this guy? The dude doesn't even verify his findings. How could you trust and rely upon this guy to give you anything worthwhile. There's nothing relevant from him. This guy is just a shameful, pitiful pumper. All he does is grift AMC. I don't care if you support the company. What I care is, hey, be factual, factual about it. You're going to say, hey, this is good for a company back it up with actual relevant figures from sources that we can see, verify, and rely upon. I'm not going to rely upon some random Twitter post, some random Reddit thread, and give it credibility for its figures. No, it needs to be a reliable source. So I don't trust you when you randomly give, hey, you know what, it's just going to double what the first one did. Based on what? Are there people in the film industry? Film critics? Other producers? Studios? Are they giving projections that, hey, you know what? It's going to do 2x? 
Is there some sort of analysis of what this movie is going to be? Is there any um, looking at um, early screening sales and basing your projections on that? Are you doing any of that analysis? Or are you just randomly throwing out numbers and you're just trying to hype up your audience, pulling in poor people who don't know better? When you put out this type of information, you should hold yourself to a higher standard. You need to have good information. If you don't know, then you just need to flat out and say, I hope it does this much so that it could have X, Y, and Z effect. But that's not the way he's presenting it. Absolute fraud. But uh, without further ado, let's go on to his most recent video. He just seemed to have put it out 13 minutes ago. Crypto plays. I've been trying to think of a way to help you understand the upcoming potential AMC reverse stock split. Because I care about all my subscribers. Now, some of you, you just like to come here and cause trouble and you're not really an AMC 8. But this message is to all the AMC 8, the true subscribers. I'm trying to think how I can help you understand the reverse stock split that's being proposed by Adam Aaron. So I got these $10 right here, okay? And uh, they're in my possession. I all tend to Yeah, so he's counting 10 $1 bills. So he's going to basically say that, hey, your AMC shares, you have whatever. 10 AMC shares, each is represented, each dollar bill represents a share, essentially. So let's go on a little ahead. AMC stock, represented by these $10, they want to take 90% of them from you, okay? Now, what do the apes always say? The apes always said, I will not sell. I'm diamond handing. I won't sell any of my uh, AMC shares. What happens in a reverse split? This guy keeps on preaching. He's been preaching on his Twitter that, oh, they're, going, they're stealing 90% of your shares away from you. So, okay, let's, let's think this through. When you have a reverse split of 10 to 1, for every 10 shares you have, after the split, you'll have one share. So, yes, from 10 shares, you go, out, out, you go down to 1. So, yes, technically, just on the most face value of just the number of shares, yes, you lost, you quote-unquote lost 9 shares. But what happens to that value of your one share? Using this guy's example, you have 10 $1 bills. With the reverse split, instead of 10 $1 bills, you have one $10 bill. The value is the same. You still hold $10. You still have the same value of money. In the case of the stock split, if you have, let's say, a share is worth a dollar just, just because he's using a dollar bill. So if you have 10 shares of AMC and they're worth a dollar each, you have $10 worth of AMC as a company. When you do a 10 to 1 reverse split, you have one share. It's still worth $10 of the company. The value of the company has not magically disappeared. They don't steal nine of your shares and give them away and, oh, just leave you one share. So let's see how he further tries to explain this. It's absolutely ridiculous. Shares. I won't even sell one share until it hits 1000 bucks per share or 10000 bucks per share. I will not. Okay, so he talks about people not selling, yada, yada, yada. How to defeat you. They know you're not going to sell until you get your price. Who knows? Maybe you only have 10 shares. Who knows? But what we're going to talk about right here so you can understand is 10 shares represented by these $10, okay? And to rob you in a legal way. It's not illegal. It's legal the way they're going to do it. They're going to rob you using the law. They're going to rob you. They're going to take 90% of your shares, okay? So right now you've got your 10 bucks. Your 10 and I want to show you a little mercy. I'm going to leave you with one. I don't want to take everything from you. And some of you have AMC investor friends that don't quite understand it because they're in the short squeeze play, but they haven't been involved with any reverse splits. They don't fully understand the stock market. So this analogy may help them understand. So now you've only got one left. The thing I would be more... I'd be thinking more towards is actually those who play options. So if you're selling options, so if, for example, let's say you're selling a covered call. If you only had a hundred shares of AMC, well, you're able to sell a covered call. You had a hundred shares to back it. But if you had a, only a hundred shares, they do that reverse split. You don't have enough shares to write that option anymore. That's one downside. But that doesn't mean that, oh, they stole your money, they stole your shares. The value of your investment is the same. But hey, 
the way to generate money off that investment, that goes down if you only had 100 shares. Because you can no longer sell those options. One share, you work so hard, not even get one share. You know, but they're gonna rub your back and they're gonna tell you, you know, give you a little massage on your neck <clears throat> and they're gonna say, don't worry, don't worry, you know, you'll burn out. But guess what, friends? What happens when they short the stock again? Okay, so he, then his defense is that, oh, hey, if you do the reverse split, they're going to short the company. But wait, are they not shorting the company now? Did suddenly all the people that you're saying they're nefariously shorting the company, they're, they stop? Are they going to stop because we're not doing the reverse split? You vote no on the reverse split? What sort of logic is this guy following? It makes absolutely no sense. You're saying, oh, they're going to, sh if you reverse split it, it goes up to higher value and they're going to knock it back down. And in this video, what um, he gives, what looks like this guy bought into Camber Energy. I bet you this guy also, he didn't look into the fundamentals of that company. That's why he doesn't understand why a company like Camber Energy was shorted to hell. Because they did a reverse split, it's got to be worth the same. $3.19. Yeah, so he talks about how this company did that reverse split and it's back down. Well, the whole purpose of this reverse split or the whole concept of it, it's not changing the fundamentals of your company if, if it's just bumping up the share price. Everything else about the company remains the same. Because you do a reverse split doesn't mean randomly your debt goes away or you suddenly have a positive cash flow from a negative to a positive cash flow. It doesn't suddenly mean that, oh, hey, yeah, you don't have to make payments on your interest. On, on, you don't have to make um, payments on the debt that you have, interest payments. That suddenly doesn't go away because you do a reverse split. And especially a lot of these penny stocks, they do those reverse splits because, hey, they're getting a warning from um, from the exchange, like NASDAQ. They're saying, oh, hey, warning, delisting no notice because, hey, you're underneath our uh, minimum threshold. Sure, AMC is not doing this uh, because they're worried about the delisting. But this whole concept that, oh, hey, you should vote no because... They're going to short the company. Well, the people have been shorting the company. It's not randomly going to stop because people, because it's no longer being reverse split. No, that that's that's a false assumption. Sense now? Wait, it's only been a couple uh, to go. Now the stock in a few days has gone down sixty percent, and not only that, you lost five hundred percent of your shares on that play. Take a look at SNDL. Do some homework on SNDL. They had a reverse stock split recently. What happened to the price? It crashed. Once again, look further into the company. Sundial Growers, Weed Company. What do their financials look like? What's their cash flow? How are they managing their company? They did a lot of offerings, a lot of money raises. How is that money being spent? He has absolutely no clue, no understanding about the companies that he's looking into. He's not researching it diligently, thoroughly enough. He understands nothing about the company. All he sees is, oh, you know what? Price goes up, price goes down. Oh, yeah, if it doesn't go the way I think it is, oh, it's obviously manipulation and crime. It's because he doesn't understand how the market, how normally the market operates. Just because it doesn't go the way you, it doesn't go the way you expect it to doesn't mean that there's crime happening. Much like you can't go crying to the officer, oh, hey, I didn't know the law, I broke it, but uh, I didn't know it, so I should be forgiven. No. You go speeding on the highway, high speed limit is 50. You go 70, cop pulls you over, and he gives you a speeding ticket. You can't go tell him, hey, you know what, I didn't know the speed limit. No, you still broke the law. You should have known the law. Just like you should have known what you're investing into.
your failure to do your true DD, your due diligence, resulting in you losing money is your own fault. So let's see what else he says. You, you know, take a look at COSM. The price crashed. It's down 40% since the reverse. 40% in a few days. Um, if they do this vote and they trick you into voting yes, and you say yes, go ahead, take 90% of my shares away from me, and they short the stock again, and it goes right back down to $5 again, and you're left with nothing. You know what Adam Aaron's going to say to you? He's going to say, hey, you voted yes. It's not my fault you voted yes. You could have voted no. So you won't be able to say anything to him. It'll be your own fault. All right? So and here goes on his... He goes on more just explaining his absolute ignorance about the whole situation. He's just pushing, hey, don't vote no. Or, or uh, don't vote yes for the split. Vote no for the split. Without any sort of actual... Tr any sort of diligence. Any sort of research behind it. I'll pull up my little... I'll do quote unquote forecasting model because I mock Avi, that Avi harsh harsh whatever Avi H that guy, and his his model is absolutely garbage. But nonetheless, look at AMC's financials. Watch their cash and cash equivalents equivalents. What's their revenue? What's their operating costs and expenses? What's their net loss? What's their cash burn quarter, quarter, quarter after quarter? What's their financial situation look like? If they're burning hundreds of millions of dollars every quarter, Q4 was supposed to be really good, but it's not looking that way. Q2 was one of the best quarters that they had, um, the, the best quarter they had post-pandemic. But hey, you're still burning $121 million. Q1 of this year, 337 million. They need money for their war chest. If they want to survive, they need more cash. And they need some way to stave off all that debt that they're carrying. More than $5 billion of debt. There's only so much you can do to push back paying that debt. Much like you buy a car, get a loan for it, you make monthly payments on that. You're not paying just the interest, you're paying also against the principal amount that you borrowed. There comes a time when you got to finish paying that off. If you don't pay it off, they're going to take your car back from you. Much like if AMC is not able to pay back their debt, those creditors are going to come looking for AMC and they're going to take part, take AMC's equity, part of stuff that they own. But you know what the issue is? What's their assets? What's their liabilities? They have more liabilities than assets. They have a negative cash flow. They're burning, they have a a cash burn of hundreds of millions of dollars. How are they going to pay off this debt? And if they default, someone's getting screwed. They have more liabilities than assets. So why is this whole reverse stock split going through? Along with the reverse stock split, the share authorization and the selling of debt it's because they want to raise more money on a fundamental level this is a smart play by the company the company raises 110 million dollars from the initial sale of ape they're able to shed a hundred million dollars of debt from their senior loan, um, those loans that uh, Antara owns. And they're able to shave off $10 million, I believe, in their annual interest payments. 
So that reduces their burden of interest payments every quarter on a year basis. You have a little bit less debt to worry about. And you've brought in more money. You brought in fresh capital. That allows you to keep your business running. The hope is that, hey, movie, movie theaters and um, movie production, production studios, hey, you guys really need to pump out movies. You need, they need to be good. People need to come. They've got to spend money at the theaters. They've got to buy lots of tickets. They've got to buy lots of concessions, popcorn, candy, sodas, other foods. They've got to buy a merch, etc. They're buying time in hopes that, hey, hopefully there comes a time in which we can generate positive cash flow to a point where we're not burning money year after year, quarter after quarter. To do that, they need to survive. And what my past two videos have talked about on, is on the fundamental level. How much time do they have left? I surmise that, hey, if they do an average cash burn of $120 million a quarter, based on their current liquidity, they would run out by the end of 20, before the end of 2023. But hey, you know what? With this fresh raising of capital, $110 million to that sell of additional ape, they bought themselves time for four quarters, a little over four quarters. That buys them time till 2024. And in that time, more movies will be pump hopefully coming out and hopefully they'll have other initiatives and manners in which maybe they're able to reduce capital expenditures, maybe they're able to improve margins, maybe they're able to negotiate better deals with production studios so they get maybe better portion of the ticket sales, or maybe they're able to get in discussions with their distributors for um, like food, um, they're able to improve margins on that, maybe they change up the concession stand m menus, whatever. There's, I'm sure there's tons of different options available. I don't know the success of it, but they're just buying time in hopes that hey, maybe some sort of plan that we ha um, some sort of plan that we make, something that we implement, maybe that will let us go back to some working business model. That's the hope. And when you vote to hey, we're not going to authorize more shares so that you can convert AMC into um, ape into AMC when you don't let them author um, if when you don't authorize them to give them the ability to sell more equity down the line sort of like what ape has right now ape has the ability to just absolutely dilute the, dilute itself into oblivion basically because they have what 40 million preferred shares left and because um, ape unit is 1 one one hundredth of an actual share. So ape unit versus an um, a, an ape um, preferred share. Forty million shares are left that haven't been um, spread out. It's been a total of I believe fifty was authorized. Uh, fifty million was authorized, of which ten was used. So that's why you had the five hundred and sixteen initially given out um, to each share of AMC. And then you just, we had recently that 400 and up to 425 units of Ape. If this deal finally goes through, they'll only have what roughly 40 mil, 40 million shares of Ape left to sell, provided that they already haven't sold some of it. I know the agreement also gives limitations of not being able to sell more than what 40 million dollars worth. Nonetheless, you're crippling the company and its ability to stave off bankruptcy. Your worry is that, oh, hey, we need to destroy the short thesis. Well, if the company is not able to raise money, you're not allowing it to dilute then what's it going to do? See, I come at you 
with actual logic. I come at you with official figures, real numbers, statistics, data, SEC filings, financial statements. This guy throws numbers, just pulls numbers out of absolute thin air, just like that Puss in Boots project, um, prediction. Then the way he it tries to explain this stock split to you, absolutely wrong. This guy should be avoided. This dude is a true AMC grifter. He's an absolute fraud. Doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just trying to hype stuff up and make some sort of gain out of it. Whether that's money, whether that's attention, whether that's subscribers, etc. Absolute fraud. And look at all those mentions of all his plays. He gives me vibes of a really dumb version of some of those pump and dumpers. Some of those, especially those people, you know, that recently was on the news of Atlas Trading, those, the Zach Morrises and so forth. The, nef the malicious people that basically ripped off people. They were basically using retail investors as exit liquidity. They are basically taking money from them because they would buy in when the um, stock was low. They'd pump it up basically because they had a group of people that they had sent signals to. This is kind of, this, this guy is just like the dumb version of them. He's not smart enough to do that. He's probably, he would probably follow those folks and then he'd get burned and then he'd be complaining about, oh, hey, this is manipulation by, by market makers, by hedgies. Absolutely ridiculous. But once again, we shut this. I explained how this guy is an absolute fraud, and I'll continue. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna change my mind, and I'm gonna continue to do so. This guy needs to be called out. I really want to talk to this guy, whether a Discord call, Twitter Spaces, whatever, YouTube Live, Telegram, whatever, whatever platform. Let's talk. Let's see how real this guy is. I don't think he is. He's either being paid or he's literally just absolutely retarded. Nonetheless, if he's really retarded, you shouldn't be following him for his information. If he's maliciously doing it to make money, and he's being paid by someone, whatever, PR firm, etc. Same thing. You shouldn't be following him. He should be disclosing that information, saying, oh, hey, I'm being paid to do put out this type of position, to put out this narrative. But I don't see any of those disclosures. So my guess is two options. Either he's really dumb, or the other one is he's being paid to do so. Nonetheless, terrible, terrible person. Should not follow him. Well, this is the video. Um, until next time, folks, thanks for watching. Shadow Stars out. Um, actually, one last thing. If you guys can help me, um, I'd love um, if you guys can help support my channel. Um, if you want. Shadow Stars 1348 or Shadow Stars 13. Please follow me on YouTube. Please like and subscribe my stuff. Spread the word out um, if you find any of my content good. Um, please leave comments. If you've got questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I want to help tackle the, is the issues of these fake people, these absolute fraudsters tricking people. They need to stop pushing out false information. You can push out whatever stock you like. But be truthful about it. Don't lie to the people. That's all I, all I expect. Okay, that's going to be it. Peace out, folks. Thanks for watching.